I created a capture the flag challenge called Curly Fries. This was a miscellaneous task in the NomCon Capture the Flag 2024, the fifth time we've hosted that game. A ton of fun. And this is a privilege escalation challenge with a special thanks to Tiberius, who gave me the inspiration for this after he had kind of an interesting solution for the end of Bookstore, which is another challenge I created for Hacking Hub. I can add a link in the description if you're interested in that. But looks like all we need to do is escalate our privileges and run the program in the root user's home directory. Now, this required an SSH connection. I am running this locally because we have now turned down the infrastructure for the NomCon capital flag. I will try to get the challenges up and available for you in another location. But in this case, I will go ahead and SSH into my local host, just hosting the challenge for us to work with. The prompt included the credentials user being the username and user pass as the password. Now, if we were to LS inside of this directory, I am just user at Curly Fries as the host, but there's nothing really here. There's not a whole lot to go off of. However, it is a privilege escalation challenge, which might clue us in that we could use sudo. Super user do, hey, try to run things as the root user. We could use tac l to list what commands we might be able to do. Now, our user may do the following. Looks like we could run as the user fry, hey, that entity, that identity that we wanted to at least try to gain access to before we got to the root user. And without a password, we could run the curl command, that utility to access a lot of web URLs, right? Hey, actually access the internet, make HTTP requests. But this seems like we could only request something on localhost. So 127001 as the IP address on port 8000 and only going to a health check. So before we even run this with sudo, we could just straight up curl Look, do we even have anything running on port 8000? Uh, no, in this case. I think we might be able to use SS or netstat. Uh, we don't have any of those installed. Oh, okay, I guess we have netstat because we're in an Alpine Docker container. But at the very least, we don't have a host actually being served, anything actually accessible on port 8000 because I intended you to just spin up your own HTTP server on port 8000. So we could simply just run, I believe we have Python 3 in this case. Yes, we do. So Python 3, which means we could use tac m to specify a module that we want to run and it does have the built-in HTTP module. Dot server will allow us to simply host a HTTP server on port 8000 by default. That keeps it easy. With that, we could then access that on port 8000. Problem is, and actually I will need to create another terminal if I were to do this. So I'm going to drop down with Terminator just to get another shell. Once again, enter the password. And now I could curl HTTP if you wanted to include the schema. I believe it'll add it by default. My microphone is in the way and I can't even read my keyboard because I do occasionally look at the keyboard to see where the number seven is. Now that's not all that helpful. We get a directory listing that's just the default natural, hey, functionality of a HTTP.server hosted with Python. However, we could run with the sudo tac l reference, anything going to slash health check. So if we were to create a file, we could just simply, uh, you know what, we should actually host probably out of the temporary directory. Maybe that's fine for us. We can make a directory for like dub dub dub, and that way we can run the exact same Python 3 HTTP server in that location. Let me get back over there in the other shell. So I could just do a please subscribe with typos and everything <laughs> in that health check file. Now I could end up running curl HTTP 127.8.0.0.1 port 8000 for the health check file. Curling that down, we get our please subscribe, okay? But again, that's not all that helpful to us. We could do a little bit more enumeration and see what else is on the box, knowing that at the very least from the pseudo output without having any other a reconnaissance intel here. We know that Fry is presumably a user. So let me get to this terminal all maximized. Obviously, if we were to take a look at it, set password, we do have a Fry user available to us. So what we might be able to do instead of using health check as just a temporary file that we create, we could create like a symbolic link. We could actually use ln tac s to create a linked file that will point to another file. This is what I had intended for you to be able to do to actually get the health check file pointing to something else on the file system. Um, if I were to create a health check, 
based off of anything that that fry user that we knew from etc password is in home. If they're an interactive user, they might have history. Hey, the commands that they ran from the terminal. And that's clued in from the challenge prompt. I note, uh oh, our friend fry has been typing at the keyboard and running all kinds of commands, but his fingers are dirty. So we could try to get their bash history file. Now, I don't know if I have that syntax right. No, I'm always getting that wrong. I do always get the parameters wrong. Uh, so I have to actually swap those. The order is different. It should be the bash history file first and the file that we want to create health check following that. Now we should have health check in our current directory. LS LA would tell us, let me zoom out a bit so that's actually visible for us. Health check is pointing to home fry dot bash history. With that, we could use curl now again, with that being hosted on our port 8,000, just a simple sudo tack u to operate and act as that user fry curl 127001 to our health check. Now when I hit enter on this, there we go. We get to read their bash history. Okay, some nonsense in here, but we do get to see SSH pass being used, which usually supplies a password for SSH connections with tac P, which clues us in that I love curly fries, yum yum in my tum tum. You can clip that. Uh, that's the password for fry as our user. Now, I, I gotta admit, I, I think I had maybe muffed up the permissions. I think even this user user as we are now could just straight up read fries dot bash history file without needing to use curl. Yeah, I think I just had like the settings. I think I had the permissions on that one modified so that would ensure in work. But yeah, anyone could read their uh, bash history file. With that though, we do now know Fry's password. So let me SSH in both of these shells to fry at localhost with their password. And there we are as that fry user. I'll do that once again down here, just so we have a second one rolling for us. And now we can start our numeration reconnaissance. Hey, maybe looking around the file system all over again. However, there's not a lot to dig into. Before we keep cruising though, I would like to give a special shout out and some love to the sponsor of today's video, Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, John Strand, and the whole incredible tribe of companies that they are always up to doing fantastic stuff. If you haven't seen them before in other videos, I have showcased some of their pay what you can training, which is phenomenal by the way. If you go to Anti-Siphon Training, you can find a link in the the video description, but in the training section, you do have a pay what you can training that has a lot of phenomenal courses where you can literally just choose the price tag. You can say how much you'd like to pay. John Strand himself does a lot of these. And if you sign up, I think if you go through Cvent, I think that's what handles the registration. There's a button and a link to say, look for tuition assistance, click here, and you can literally get access to the course for $0. All the folks there are absolutely genius, incredible, phenomenal, fantastic people. And John Strand actually puts out a ton of these intro labs out and about on GitHub. Completely available, completely for free, just on the internet. You can go to github.com slash strandjs slash intro labs. And if you dig into the navigation, the markdown file here, you can see a ton of these lessons for like introduction to SOC or the Security Operations Center. They have some on intro to security. Hey, maybe some allow listing, deny listing, EDR, great work there. Cyber deception, active defense. And we've covered some of these in a lot of other videos, but actually I think one that might be especially pertinent to it where up to in this video, the web log review might be worthwhile to dig into how some web servers will actually log, get artifacts, and hey, have some telemetry when you're making HTTP requests like we're doing with curl or some of the others. So super cool, good stuff in there. They include a virtual machine and a whole lot of the tooling. Definitely go check it out, link in the video description. But now let's get back to our curly fries challenge because we've gained privileges and access as the fry user, but there wasn't more to dig into in their home directory. Again, we are trying to escalate our privileges, so why not, once again, we take a look at sudo tac l. Looks like fry, the user that we are, can run commands as root without a password. In the case of curl, once again, 127001 port 8000, health check again, except this time with an asterisk, which means we could supply basically anything else that we want 
for curl. We could keep adding on to the end of the command, keep hey trying to add other arguments or parameters or things that we might be able to do. With that, maybe we were to actually take a look at curl. Okay, I guess inside the Docker container, we don't have the man pages for the manual for curl. So let me open up just another terminal on my host and let's take a look at the man page for curl now. <laughs> curl is to do some transfer with the URL and you could supply any options or URLs as you would like, a little bit more description. And then way down below, you can see all of the other arguments, parameters, flags, switches, whatever you really want to call them for other functionality that you might be able to do with curl. This is quite a hefty man page. So there's a lot to read through if you wanted to explore all of it, but I will speed run us right towards the solution here because we could very well just get back to the terminal here, use curl as we would have maybe with sudo. We'll use sudo tack u root in this case, 12700 one port 8000 and we'll need health check once again. Now we don't have anything actually running on port 8000 remember right now. If we actually move back into the temporary directory in our other session, let's make just another serve directory so we'll have something clean to work in. I'll use python3 tacm http.server once again, so we'll spin that up on port 8000, but we should actually get some files over there. So let me get over to temp serve and we could create health check if we really wanted to, but we could also just I don't know actually add on to the command that we're already building out with sudo here. Because remember that asterisk that we saw in sudo tack l output told us we can just keep adding whatever we want at the end. It's a wild card. So what's to stop us from just actually trying to read a local file? We could use the file schema rather than like HTTP as we might if we were trying to actually access our 12700 one, right? HTTP or HTTPS is usually the schema there, but there's nothing stopping us from doing the same thing with file and then trying to access anything we want. We could actually, I guess, close down this HTTP server because we probably don't even need it, right? Could we go ahead and read something like etc. shadow? That is something that only root would be able to read and it looks like we can. It's at Rashado, which will include all the password hashes for different users. This is an option and we could try to crack the password. However, it's a bad option. It might take too much time. We might not even get the password hash. It could be anything. So that's not ideal, but we could do more with curl because why not try to save files the same way that curl usually allows us to add output with tag O. We can store and save the contents in the other file that we might like. If we tried to use that, will we get health check as the first thing that we requested, which we know errored, or the file that we know errored? What could we do here? We could save a file, we'll put this into temp serve. I know we're already in that location, but we'll call that file like log. Now if I ls, oh, do we have anything? No. Is that because that just failed? It might be. Let's add another tack o, just to see, can we save something else? Like the second thing that we request. Could we put that in temp serve data? How about that? Oh, that seemed to do something. Now we have, data, and if we actually were to take a look at that file, it is etc. password. So we have arbitrary read now as the root user and arbitrary write where we can output this. However, only arbitrary in that, okay, it's something that we would have to get from the output of curl. So curl has to be able to see that from someplace else. But we just learned the trick in the previous step, going from the user user to fry user, we could just simply host whatever we wanted to on port 8000 for our health check and then put that as our file to write. Now I know we could think outside the box here because this is SSH, we've connected as fry. So I'm curious, does fry have SSH keys in .SSH? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's use SSH keygen and try to generate our own ID RSA or public and private key pair to log in through SSH. Would that work, right? ls-tackle-a.ssh, now we have those files created. Do I actually have SSH present here? I do. So I could SSH into just fry at localhost, correct? Yes, 
it would prompt for a password, which we know, but could we actually, inside of the .ssh file, put the public key that we'll end up using into the, like, authorize keys folder? Like, we have our public key, right? So what's to stop us from now using that as our authorized keys file? Just as a proof of concept, that way we could try to SSH with our own public and private key pairing and not be prompted for a password. Will that work? It did. It brought us right into Fry at Curly Fries. If I try to exit here, you can see that I'm in a subshell. That'll bring me right back to where I usually was. So, idea, putting the puzzle pieces together here, we could copy the ID RSA public file that we have for our own public private key pairing. Let's go put that into serve temp where we, oh, sorry, temp serve, where we will go ahead and serve our HTTP instance, Python 3 tacm HTTP dot server, port 8000 again. Now, that could ultimately act as our health check file, right? Let's go back down to our server and let's actually move our ID rsa.pub into our health check file. And then let's use our curl command above to curl down health check, which should give us, oh, actually let's start the service. I am dumb. Now we could see that output. Can we actually just write this to roots.ssh folder and their own authorized keys. And before I hit enter on this, just to validate, um, let's another SSH session down below. That way we could validate. If I were to try to connect to root at localhost, I can't right now without knowing their password, which we don't know. So we'll have to bail out of that. But if we use this trick to have the health check be the public key that we've created, put that and store it, write it as roots authorized keys. I'll hit enter here and fingers crossed, now we should be able to use our public private key pairing that we generated for this fry user as the same one that root would be able to accept and understand, right? Can I SSH to root at localhost? Let me clear the screen here, fingers crossed, we are root and that's all it took. <laughs> you could do some other clever tricks there. You could, I don't know, manipulate curl however you'd like with the other command line arguments, arbitrary read, arbitrary write. You have that capability with that using that misconfiguration in sudo tack l. But obviously getting into our home directory, now we have a get flag random suffix. The reason that I did that was so that you had to get a full blown shell because you could do like, again, whatever file inclusion that you wanted to, you could just read a flag.txt. But I wanted you to get a little bit clever, get a little bit creative and think, okay, how can you get a full blown shell? So executing get flag random suffix does require you to press enter within one second to retrieve the flag. I like to do that in a binary so that way it validates that you are in an interactive session. So we have the flag. And we have solved that challenge, curly fries, just for some gimmick, just for some tricks, just for some, what we might be able to do with curl with an asterisk in the pseudoers file. You should never really have an asterisk there that is absolutely opening the door for abuse and whatever threat actor adversary hacker is going to do for privilege escalation. Quick showcase for this one, but hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the NomCon Capture the Flag competition if you happen to play it, or at least some of the write-ups, some of the solutions, some of this video showcase here. And please, please, please give some love to our sponsors. They're really the only way this channel can keep doing what it's doing. Link in the video description. Big shout out, big thanks to Anti-Siphon Training, Black Hills Information Security, John Strand, and all the incredible crew. Please do show them some love. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.